好，二零一四年第六条题目就有关于演化论嘅，咁题目就讲啦，一般人咧都相信而家我哋养紧嘅狗咧系嚟自于古代嘅狼去演化而成嘅，咁有啲科学家啦就想去研究一下狼同埋狗嘅基因图谱，就做一个比较，而佢哋就去谂啦，当狼驯化成为狗嘅过程当中咧，啲系关乎于消化淀粉质嘅基因咧系牵涉喺其中嘅。而當中我哋就抽取咗 Gen A 咧，作為一個研究對象。而呢個 Gen A 咧，就攞嚟製造澱粉酶嘅。而呢個基因仲有啲咩特別呢？原來佢喺個基因圖譜入面咧，係會出現咗好幾個嘅 copy 嘅。而下面呢幅圖咧，就想話俾我哋聽，喺我哋研究當中嘅三十五隻狼同埋一百三十六隻狗入面咧，究竟喺佢哋個基因圖譜入面有幾多個 Gen A 呢？咁喺讲题目之前呢，就先解释下点样睇呢幅图先啦。呢幅图呢 y axis 就係有几多隻嘅狼或者狗囉 x axis 呢，就係喺呢个基因图谱入面有几多个 Gen A 嘅呢个 copy 啦。咁所以你会发现啦，喺个三十五隻我哋研究嘅狼入面呢，全部狼都係得两个嘅 Gen A 嘅 copy 啫。但係啦，一百三十六隻狗入面呢，咁我哋会发现啦，佢哋个变化就好大啦。最少都有五个 copy， 而最多咧可以有三十个 copy。例如啦，有十只狗咧，佢会 show 到有九个 Gen A 嘅 copy 嘅，如此类推。咁睇完幅图啦，你大约会知道啲狗咧系咪有多一啲嘅 Gen A 嘅呢个 copy 啊？而 A 呢个基因咧系帮助啲狗或者狼咧去制造淀粉酶嘅。咁而家睇翻题目咯，根据以上嘅数据同埋我哋有关于基因表现嘅过程。我哋就要解释一下点解喺啲狗嘅身体入面，佢哋淀粉酶嘅活性比起狼嘅身体入面嘅淀粉酶嘅活性咧系为之高嘅。所以除咗幅图之外啦，都考紧我哋有关于 transcription 同埋 translation 嘅概念啦。用 DNA 转录制造 mRNA， 再用 mRNA 转译成为蛋白质，而蛋白质就可以攞嚟制造酶啦，系咪？咁所以一开始啦，利用数据咯。狗呢，佢相比起狼嚟讲呢，係会多一啲嘅基因 A 嘅，而呢个基因就会被转录成为 mRNA， 而 mRNA 亦都会转译成为呢个淀粉酶。但係要返返去最尾呢一句，喎，点解狗嘅淀粉酶嘅活性会比狼为之多啊？係因为多啲酶啊嘛，多啲基因整多啲酶，越係多酶反应就越快。呢个係喺我哋酶嗰课学返嚟嘅。而去到 Part B 呢，就有关于一个假说，就去解释返一个狼驯化成为狗嘅过程嘅。你就讲啦，喺好耐好耐以前啲野狼呢，就係、是、俾人类住嘅地方周围嘅废物啊、厨余啊，去吸引咗返嚟。哦，吸引咗返嚟之后，佢就食人类嘅厨余啦。如果呢个假说係言之成理嘅话，咁我哋就要解说一下喺喺当驯化狼成为狗嘅过程底下。点解会导致到有越嚟越多嘅 Gen A 系俾人筛选咗出嚟呢？咁成条题目其实就系考紧我哋有关于演化自然选择嘅过程。先我哋就去谂下淀粉酶同埋狼所食嘅嘢有啲咩嘅关系。佢话啲狼就走近人嘅栖息地方，就食啲厨余。咁呢啲厨余又有咩特性呢？原来啦，就系有多嘅淀粉质。咁当初啦，喺发展农业之前，我哋嘅主要食粮呢都系其他动物嚟嘅，捕猎兔仔啊，甚至狮子、老虎啦，系咪？当人发展咗农业嘅话呢，肉类嘅蛋白质就变成麦啊、米啊嘅碳水化合物啦。而之后又点样关演化事呢？首先我哋就要諗下喺狼呢个群体入面，究竟有咩嘅变异呢？而呢个狼群嘅变异又同佢嘅演化有咩关系呢？我哋当中就要提及翻演化论所讲嘅适者生存啦。当一啲生物佢有一个有优势嘅特性底下，佢就有大啲机会去生存同埋繁殖。个狼群入面可能都有一部分嘅狼，佢有较为多嘅 Gen A， 而系多 A 呢个基因咧，佢就能够产生多啲嘅淀粉酶，就会导致到啦，佢哋更加能够适应得到去食用人类嘅厨余啦。因为人类嘅厨余正正就系多淀粉质。与此同时，佢哋亦都较为多淀粉酶去消化淀粉质。有一部分嘅狼咧
，佢会渐渐适应咗食用人类厨余而被驯化。而而呢一批被驯化咗嘅狼群，由于佢有一个较为稳定嘅食物来源，就嚟、是、自于人类嘅厨余啦，所以相比起一啲佢得较为少嘅 Gen A 嘅狼群咧，佢哋能够生存得好啲。一来佢有稳定嘅食物来源，二来佢亦都有能力去消化到多啲嘅淀粉质，去获得多啲嘅能量，能够生存下来。但系生存下来唔系故事嘅结尾，佢哋系有能力繁衍多啲嘅下一代。而呢啲嘅下一代亦都有較為多嘅 A 呢個基因，所以就慢慢導致到有一個篩選嘅過程。如果你唔夠 A 呢個基因去產生得較為多嘅澱粉酶嘅話，其實即使你走埋人群堆係冇著數嘅，你咪繼續食啲澱粉質咯，但係你都消化唔到。相比起有較為多 A 呢個基因嘅狼咧，佢就能夠吸收得好啲。唔好話肥絲大隻肚滿腸肥先啦，起碼大隻過你，好氣好力過你。撞啱有个冬天，你搵唔到嘢食，佢仍然同啲人一齐住，仍然有嘢食嘅话，你咪就係被淘汰嗰、那个，佢就係留低嗰个囉。所以喺翻书呢，你都会搵到 natural selection 自然选择嘅呢个理论㗎啦。而最重要嘅中间呢一个。就系、是、喺同一个物种入面，佢哋系存在住变异。因为如果冇变异，大家全部一模一样嘅话咧，系冇得好拣嘅。因为一拣，一系就全部生存，一系就全部死晒。但系而家呢个变异就唔同啦，有啲狼呢就多啲 A 呢个基因，有啲狼呢就少啲 A 呢个基因，我哋先可以筛选㗎嘛，係咪？好，跟住啦，去到 Part C 啦，就要我哋去描述下一个实验，去帮我哋比较一下狗同埋狼嘅淀粉酶嘅活性。咁呢个题目呢，都有关于消化嘅概念啦。咁所以之前如果你冇睇到猪猪呢条片呢，就快啲睇返玩猪屎咯。咁啊，一开波啦！作为科学探究，有啲咩要考我哋嘅呢？第一，究竟淀粉酶係喺隻狼同埋狗嘅边一个身体部分呢？我哋都会分泌淀粉酶嘅口水啦、肠液啦同埋胰液啦，都有淀粉酶嘅。咁我哋就喺度抽取咗出嚟先啦。然后啦，我哋點樣去知道酶嘅活性呢？就即係想去睇下一个反应嘅快慢啦。我哋亦都要諗下一个反应嘅受质同埋我哋嘅产物系乜嘢，帮我哋判断返一个 reaction rate。我哋一系就去判断一下受质嘅消失嘅速度，即系话啲淀粉质有几快俾人消化咗去。另一个导向就系想睇下成个反应嘅产物就系麦芽糖啦。麦芽糖系其中一款嘅还原糖，即系话我哋亦都可以睇下成个反应制造还原糖嘅速度系有几快啦。然后我哋就要决定用乜嘢嘅 food test 去揾得到淀粉质嘅消失速度同埋麦芽糖嘅生成速度。当中我哋就用翻碘液测试同埋本纳德测试啦。当然我哋要讲下点样做啊嘛，我哋点样进行碘液测试咧？点样进行本纳德测试咧？然后再讲下我哋点样分析个结果。例如啦，我哋将淀粉酶同埋淀粉捞埋一齐。跟住每隔一段时间就抽一部分嘅混合物出嚟做一个碘液测试，从而去睇下去到边一个时间底下嗰、那个混合物会变成啡色。喺啡色嘅咩意思啊？即係话冇咗淀粉质，即係话啦，我哋利用唔同嘅酶喺短啲嘅时间就能够获得一个啡色嘅话呢。亦即係话嗰啲淀粉已经唔再存在，亦即係意味住嗰隻淀粉酶嘅活性较为高。又或者我哋利用制造产物嘅呢个逻辑，当我哋将个淀粉酶同淀粉质混合咗之后，俾一定嘅时间佢去做一个消化，然后进行本纳德测试，从而再去记录返究竟我哋能够产生几多嘅砖红色沉淀物，能够产生得越多嘅砖红色沉淀物，亦即係我哋有越多嘅麦芽糖，亦即係代表淀粉酶嘅活性亦都较为高。好又嚟到一点出发嘅时间啦，今次成条题目咧就讲演化嘅，第一条路径就讲下唔同嘅机制，一个系拉马克嘅学说，一个就系达尔文嘅自然选择。下一次梗系可以问下你两者嘅比较啦。而第二个概念就系利用酶呢一样嘢去问我哋有关于蛋白质嘅合成，从而考翻我哋有关于转录同埋转译嘅概念。而呢条题目系可以问到好多款唔同类型嘅科学探究嘅。今次呢条题目咧就系、是、问我哋有关于基因图谱啦，同埋酶嘅活性。咁有咩变奏啊？可以问下我哋亲缘遗传学啦，同埋比较生物学。嗱，今次就唔系睇啲诶手手脚脚啊嗰啲骨头嘅，就系睇个基因啫。咁即系话下次可以问下你亲缘遗传学啦。喺狼同埋狗之间有冇曾经出现咗一只迷之生物呢？
。可能有一日个科学家话俾你听，嗱，而家呢一只咧就系介乎于狼同埋狗之间嘅生物啦。你可唔可以比较下佢哋嘅同源结构啊？又或者将狼啊、狗啊、猫啊唔同类型嘅生物去去比较下佢哋某一款嘅基因嘅碱基序列，或者比较下佢哋某一款嘅蛋白质佢哋嘅氨基酸序列又得唔得咧？梗系可以啦。On for question six is the question about evolution. It's generally believed that domestic dog evolved from the ancient wolves, and some scientists they compare the genome of the wolves and the dogs and suggest that genes with the key roles in starch digestion were selected during the domestication of wolves into dogs. Of these genes was gene A, which code for amylase, and this gene may exist in many copies in a genome. So in the following graph, we can find that the number of individuals having different number of copies of gene A in 35 wolves and 136 dogs. So before we talk about part A, I need to talk about how can we understand this graph? How can we read this? So in the y-axis is the number of individuals, how many wolves and dogs are we studying? And for the x-axis is the number of copies of gene A in the genome of each individual. So you can see for the wolf, there is only one bar. It means that all the wolf, 35 wolves, they only have two copies of gene A, coding for the amylase. And for the dogs, we can see the variety. At least five copies gene A, coding for the amylase, and some of them they have maximum 30 copies of gene A, coding for the amylase. So for the other bars, you can see that, for example, there are 10 dogs, they have nine copies of the gene A. So let's talk about the question based on the data and the gene expression processes. Explain why the amylase activity in dogs is generally higher than that in the wolves. It means that we do not only use the graph data, but also we need to recall the gene expression processes, which are transcription and translation, the production of the messenger RNA and the production of the protein. To begin with, we need to use the data. Dogs have many more copies of gene A in the genome than the wolves. That's something we can see from the graph. And this gene copy will be transcribed into mRNA, which in turn translate into amylase. And more amylase will be produced in dogs, resulting in higher amylase activity. So the critical concept is that more copies of gene A in the genome, they can produce more amylase. And when there is a large amount of amylase, so the amylase activity will be increased. For part B, it's about the hypothesis. The wolf may have been attracted to the waste dumps near early human settlements and consume human food waste. Suggests how the domestication of the wolves would have led to the selection of multiple copies of gene A. There are several critical concepts in this question. First of all, you need to talk about the relationship between the amylase and the diet of the wolf. So any features of the consumed human food waste? Surely, before we have the agriculture, the farming, the human, they hunt. They hunt for rabbits, tiger, whatever. After they have the farming and agriculture technique, so they can produce maybe rice or maize. So that's why their diet change a bit. From the protein in the meat to the carbohydrates in the rice, so the human food waste usually contain carbohydrates or starch. And then, how does evolution take place? We need to recall the variation in the Asian wolf population, and then we need to recall the concept about survival of the fittest. Individuals with favorable characteristic have a higher chance of survival and reproduction. We can deduce that in the Asian wolf population. There may be some wolf have more copies of gene A. That's why they can produce more amylase, and they were more adapted to the starch-rich diet of the human food waste. And then they are gradually domesticate. More and more of them will live close to the human being and feed on the human food waste. So, and then we can compare the two types of wolf. One type is they have more copies of gene A. And the other type is they have less copy of gene A, so we can deduce that the wolf which have more gene A, they could grow better because they eat better and they can get a more stable food source from the human being, and then they grow better, they survive better, and then they can reproduce more and pass their genes to the next generation. You need to recall that the favorable characteristic, survival, reproduction, and pass the favorable characteristic onto their offspring, 
and over many generations, the action of natural selection leads to the evolution of a new species. So you can refer to the concept from the textbook. The theory of the natural selection, the most important thing is that there is variation among individuals of the same species. You imagine that if there is no variation among the wolf population, is there any selection? Maybe the selection will be all or none. Either all of them can survive, or none of them can survive once there is a change or a selection. And in part C, we need to describe an experiment which can compare the different amylase activity of wolves and dogs. We have a very similar question in 2012, question 10, fat digestion experiment. In this question, it's about a scientific investigation. There are some concepts we are going to check. First of all, which part of the digestive system produces the amylase? for starch digestion. This concept is related to how do we obtain the amylase from the wolves and the dogs. Secondly, in the investigation, how can we determine the reaction rate? So that's why we need to recall the substrate and the products in the reaction. There are two main methods. The first method is to measure the rate of disappearance of the substrate, which is the starch. And for the second method is to measure the rate of production of the reducing sugar, which is the maltose. So you need to recall that the amylase can speed up the breakdown of starch into maltose. And then how do we test the chemicals for the starch or the maltose? And we need to recall the corresponding food test, Aldin test and the Benedict test. And how can we interpret the result? We mix the amylase with the starch and then let them to break down the starch and for example for 10 seconds and then we extract the mixture add it to the aldin solution and then we can see the brown color it means that the digestion of starch is faster it means the higher amylase activity but what if in the other test tube it takes one minute for the mixture to stay in brown so that means the amylase it takes longer time to digest all the starch into maltose and then we need a longer time to see the brown color it means the amylase activity is lower or we measure the increase in the amount of reducing sugar we mix the amylase and the starch again and then after 10 minutes we perform the benedict test of course you need to record the procedure of the benedict test right and then the one with more brick red precipitates it shows more maltose formation so that means there is a higher amylase activity and for the curriculum mapping, for this question is about evolution. It can ask you about the mechanism of evolution. One of the hypotheses is Lamarckism, and for the other one is the natural selection theory. And of course, the question can ask you to compare them. And for the other part is about the M side. And for the M side, it asks us about the protein synthesis and about the transcription and translation. For the whole question, there are a lot of scientific investigations. For example, we study the genome. For example, we study the M side activity. And of course, in other variations, it can ask you about the phylogenetic and also the comparative biology. For example, this time we just counting the number of the genes. This time we can ask you the genes particularly. Can you compare the base sequence of the gene or compare the amino acid sequence of the particular proteins? Or the case is that some scientists, they find an unknown fossil record. They believe that this fossil record, it belongs to the organism in between the wolves and the dogs. They appear during the domestication of wolves into dogs. So can you compare the homologous structure? of the fossil record and the wolves and the dogs to see any similarity or the difference.